Hello and welcome to this video in the Lockdown Learning Series where we're going to be taking a look at the filter. So this is the second of the exploratory sub subtractive synthesis uh, part of this series of videos. So today we're going to be looking at the filter. So in the previous video we looked at oscillators. I'm just going to stick for the time being with just one oscillator. So here you can see we've just got this set up. It's just playing a sawtooth wave, nothing really to it. So today we're going to be looking in the filter part of the synth. So this can get a little bit complicated. So we're going to do it in the steps that I, I normally do this because it introduces one thing at a time because generally everybody wants to create massive filter sweeps, etc. But you need to understand the basics of the, the filter first and then start applying the envelope to it, particularly because there's multiple elements you need to have in place for that to work over time. So first things first, the two static controls that you need in all these kind of things, it's a cutoff and the resonance. So the cutoff is the, is the most important control, I think. So what this does is we have, in this case, a low pass filter. It's LP means low pass. So that means low frequencies will get through. Frequencies above the filter frequency won't get through. 24 is the number of decibels per octave so it's how steep it is and in fact if we click on here we can see we can have an lp18 or a 12 or a 6 so 6 would be a fairly soft filter so it's not particularly aggressive because it's only changing by 6 db per octave so you will see the the angle of it will be less than the 24 we're going to go for 24 we'll look at this difference once we've seen what this does the cutoff frequency is the important control so this is going to give you the sound of filtering and it does so by reducing the number of frequencies it can get through. So I'm just going to play a note and then just bring this control down and you'll see in here the effect. So you'll see it here because the harmonics will disappear from the right hand side, but also you'll see it on the oscilloscope because the waveform will start to get smoother because those high frequencies that give it the jaggedness disappear. So you can see and hear what's happening. And look, it's tending towards being a sine wave. Obviously, it will never get to be a sine wave because of the way the filter is actually working. But we go from that sharp, bright sound down to a uh, almost a sine wave. Certainly not far off, although much quieter than the one we had before. So that's your basic control there. So you could, if you were uh, of a particular bent, start controlling this manually every time you play so it would be possible to record the automation of you doing this but obviously that would get old very quickly so we need a way to automate this control so we're going to see that in a second but before we do we're just going to look at resonance so the resonance controls effectively how much the signal is boosted at the cutoff frequency so if i play this here the cutoff frequency in this case, it says is 804 hertz, which is about here, okay? The resonance is going to boost it at that. So at the moment, the, the frequency of the cutoff, effectively the frequency response looks like a straight line, kind of. Wait for the pedants. It's not exactly that, but we're just going to go with that. But this will give us a boost at that frequency. So you'll see it come up. So you see that that one has been picked up, and now you can probably hear that tone is being picked out. Okay. Whenever you're playing around with this, make sure you're not listening too loud because some synths in particular, this one's not too vicious, but some synth can get really vicious and even self-resonate. So if you're listening on loud headphones, it's you can hurt yourself. So turn down, which is a good advice anyway. But So there, we can see that note is being picked out. And as we sweep this now... So you can hear it picking out those different harmonics. So those are all in that waveform. We're just highlighting them. So I'm going to turn the resonance down for the time being, but that's what resonance does. And a bit of resonance is often useful for highlighting the sound of the filter. But what we want it to do is to do what I was doing just now with the automatic. So when I press a key, the filter moves. So once you've had a bit of a play with this, this is the next step. So this involves multiple things. So we have a thing called an envelope here. So this is an envelope generator. So whenever I press a key, this gets triggered. It has an attack phase where it gets up to maximum level. It has a sustain level, which 
depends on this slider here and the decay is how long it takes to get from that maximum to this. Um, I'm, I'm going through this rather quickly because this is a video. This is all covered in full detail in the synthesis chapter on the book. So if you want this in more detail, please feel free to go to Amazon and buy my book. Uh, but this is this is just the, the general starting point. The release time is how long it takes for the filter to shut after or the envelope to close after you've let go of the key. So it will stay at the sustain level until you let go of the key and then it will it will drop off. So by default, this is set so it will go up pretty quickly and then stay there. So it's it's on all the time. So what we want to do to, to get the things going is just turn this up. So that's going to take about a second or so to go. And we don't hear it. Okay, so I'll turn this back up. We're not hearing it. It's not changing over time at all. And the reason it's not changing over time is because we haven't turned the envelope control up. So nearly always you will need to tell the synth not only the envelope, but how much the envelope is going to work on this control. If we turn it up to 10, so I'm going to turn it up to positive 100%. Well, you might just notice that it's changing. But it's, the problem is that this is too high. So these controls interact. So if we bring this down, now you can hear it opening up. If we turn this down so it's doing less, it's got less of control. Because the problem is if this is turned all the way up, this is basically banging all the way open very quickly. So unless we turn it all the way down here, and now you can hear it moving. And now we can change maybe the attack time. So if we go quicker, if we go slower, 30 seconds, that's probably a little long. But six seconds, you can hear that's taking a long time. So this can take a bit of time to get used to. So it's the interaction between the envelope settings, the envelope control, and the cutoff frequency. Now, if you want to hear a bit more clearly what's happening, if you turn resonance up a bit, It will highlight a bit. We'll turn that up a bit more because it's not too vicious. Now you're getting the classic sort of 70s filter sweep. We'll slow this down a bit more. And you can change this. So again, the ADSR seems like a simple concept, but there's there's a bit of practice you need to do. So you have to think about what it's going to do. So if I want this to open and then close, regardless of whether I'm holding the key down, I can turn the sustain down and then make this take a similar amount of time to close. So that's going to go all the way open and then it's going to go all the way down to close because this is closed. So if I play a key now, and then you'll see it go back down. Okay, now this is probably going too far because that's too much, got too much control over it. So, say so a bit of playing around with this will yield you a bit of understanding of how this works. And there's lots of things we've probably heard a million times. So, for instance, this can open very quickly and take a bit of time to shut with some resonance. And then you've got that classic squelchy. Again, you know, 1970s, often because these were things that people had just heard for the first time. These were new sounds. So that's why people were like, hey, let's, you know, let's use this to death. So you hear a lot of that kind of thing and then it falls from fashion and then it comes back in. So, you know, this is with a bit more resonance, etc., and some distortion added to it. You know, you're heading into acid kind of territory with those squelchy 303 bases. So. so today's thing, say the filter. So spend some time with it. But remember, if you're not getting the envelope working, it's a combination of the envelope settings here, the envelope control, which say on the retrolog is called envelope control, but often it, it may be called something different on different synths and the cutoff frequency. And you can spend some time just, just getting used to that. Now, if you find a preset which uses that, you can 
then understand how you can alter it to do what you want. So maybe you want a bit less envelope or you want to alter the envelope time or the cutoff frequency, etc. But the idea of doing this from, from first principles, from scratch here, is that when you hear something and you know that the sound of squelchiness is partly coming from resonance and you think, ah, oh, too much squelch, you'll know you can just turn the resonance down and that will help it. Okay, last thing we're just going to look at, I'm just going to put this back to zero and we're just going to look at the different um, curves of the filter. So here we have our 24 dB filter and we see it drops off that way. If we put it to 18, you can see it's a bit less aggressive. So it's getting up to about 6K or so. 12, you can see it's getting much further and it has a less severe sound. And 6, even more so. Fortunately, Retrolog gives us different filters to play around with. So HP stands for high pass. So here, everything below the cut off frequency will be got rid of and the high frequencies are allowed to pass so here you get that thin sound which you've probably heard on a thousand you know dj mixes with consoles etc so that's a high pass there and we can combine these so we've got band pass where you've just got a range Often I use that as a less extreme version of a high pass. And also we've got combinations of these here and band rejects, all pass filters, which gives you uh, a, a phase based result. So you, you, you'll probably perceive it as a notch, but there's also things that are happening in terms of the signals phase, etc. But certainly playing around with these, particularly with, let's say, low pass, band pass, or combinations of high pass and low pass and high pass filters. Don't be afraid to play around with them because, you know, the worst thing you have to do is just create a new retrolog. It's not the end of the world if you have to do that. So hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.